Mankind has looked to the most hopeless of people to carry out desperate and highly dangerous missions, while prisoners have been treated as disposable individuals that can undergo the riskiest of enterprises. The colonization of Latin America and Australia began with the most unwanted subjects from European societies sent to these unknown corners of the planet to fulfill their sentences. Likewise, armies have always used prisoners as soldiers, from Imperial France to the American Civil War. And during World War II, the Nazis used the same strategy, weaponizing convicted criminals who were not expected to survive the war. However, there was possibly no unit more spine-chilling than what came to be the 36th Grenadier Division of the Waffen-SS, better known as the Durlewanger Brigade. Initially formed in 1940 and tasked to contain the Polish resistance movement through counterinsurgency measures, the brigade would also prove helpful in anti-partisan actions across Eastern Europe during the German occupation. However, their original purpose would soon morph into a horror story. The Face of Evil Nazi Germany used to exploit penal units to regroup indisciplined soldiers and criminals in the Strafbataillon. This unit would usually be in charge of terrible missions, such as clearing minefields. However, more extreme measures needed to be taken, and the Durlewanger Brigade began as an experimental unit of poachers believed to be experienced enough to confront the rebels during World War II. The Waffen-SS unit eventually started welcoming the lowest scum of society, from hardcore criminals like rapists and murderers to mental asylum patients and former concentration camp inmates, and the group soon turned into a rampant gang of sadistic brutes with a license to act as they pleased. The brigade reached its awful heights in great measure due to its leader, a man so evil that even the Nazis were disgusted by his character. His name was Oskar Derlewanger. Derlewanger's sadistic impulses were first nurtured when, as a teenager, he fought in World War I. Born in 1895, he turned 18 just in time to serve as a machine gunner, both in France and Russia. Then, in 1913, Derlewanger served in the 13th Royal Württemberg Corps and was promoted to lieutenant. Moreover, he received the Iron Cross first and second class for his service. When German troops surrendered in Romania at the end of the war, Derlewanger was trapped in an internment camp there. Refusing to become a prisoner, he led 600 soldiers from the Romanian front back into Germany. Historian Peter Longerich noted that by that point, quote, he adopted an unrestrained mode of life, characterized by contempt for the rules and life of civil society. Derlewanger's amoral personality thrived in war, and he continued participating in several paramilitary units, such as the Freilkorps, with which he helped crush the German Revolution of 1918 and 1919. The German officer also obtained a PhD in political science from Frankfurt's Goethe University in 1922, and he joined the Nazi party roughly a year later. His lethal combination of cruelty and intelligence set the foundations for the monster he would come to be. In 1934, he raped a 14-year-old girl from the League of German Girls, and the Nazis judged, convicted, and expelled him from the party. He was also sentenced to two years in prison and had his doctor's degree taken away. Then, upon his release, Derlewanger was immediately re-arrested for sexual assault and sent to a concentration camp in Welzheim. Cornered, the criminal turned to an old friend and comrade from World War I, Gottlob Berger. Berger was now a senior Nazi, working closely with Heinrich Himmler himself. Berger then influenced his superior and managed to help his friend by having him sent to the Spanish Civil War, where he served with the Condor Legion. Derlewanger returned to Germany in 1939 and quickly joined the Alemannia SS. Then, not long after the invasion of Poland, Berger arranged for his protege to command a particular military unit made up of convicts. An amoral and violent alcoholic of a barbaric nature, Derlewanger was on his way to becoming what many still regard as the most evil man in the SS. Thugs. In March of 1940, the Ministry of Justice received a call directly from Himmler's headquarters in which they were told that the Fuhrer had resolved to suspend the sentences of so-called honorable poachers and offer a pardon depending on their behavior at the front. Hitler specifically required that the poachers be Bavarian and Austrian and not guilty of crimes involving trap setting. The chosen convicts were then enrolled in Marksman's Rifle Corps. The idea was that the former prisoners could merge their hunting skills and knowledge of woodcraft with their utter disregard of the law, making them suitable for the most violent missions. By May, Durlewanger was sent to Oreneinburg and asked to command a unit of 80 men. 55 were selected two months later after completing the training, and the rest were sent back to prison. Durlewanger then took the unit to Poland, along with four other officials to help keep the men in line. 
As the influx of criminals kept growing, the emphasis on poachers gravely diminished, leaving room for more severe offenders. By September, over 300 men were part of the group. Around this time, in August of 1940, Derlevanger was appointed commandant of the labor camp at Stari Jikau, where he unleashed his most primitive instincts upon the camp inmates, including injecting strychnine into some of them and watching them convulse for entertainment. Reports of his barbarity soon reached SS prosecutor Conrad Morgan, who tried to dig further into the madman's evil doings, but Berger's protection loomed stronger. Then, despite shocking even the most radical Nazis and several SS officials, his unit came under nominal SS jurisdiction. Derlwanger would keep his own men disciplined through beatings and even shootings, and desertions weren't uncommon. On the other hand, he allowed his men to indulge in their most obscure desires, from looting and pillaging to raping and torturing. However, if someone dared loot an object he craved, the commander would execute him on the spot. Attempts to remove Derlwanger and his men would continue for years, but Berger always interceded on his friend's behalf and provided him with immunity. However, the SS eventually transferred the unit to Belarus as a means to address complaints and suppress a partisan uprising in the region. Unsurprisingly, the battalion didn't actively engage in the fight against the partisans and instead opted to terrorize the population. Horrific Acts The unit, also dubbed the Black Hunters, massacred about 30,000 people in Belarus. Their favorite methods were cramming dissidents into a barn and then setting it on fire. If anyone tried to escape, they'd be met with machine guns. As the ranks swelled with more and more criminals, the unit officially became a regiment. In addition, there were few casualties among the gang. In the words of historian Timothy Snyder, quote, As it inflicted its first 15,000 mortal casualties, the Special Commando Derlewanger lost only 92 men, many of them no doubt to friendly fire and alcoholic accidents. A ratio such as that was possible only when the victims were unarmed civilians. As the Soviets began pushing west and forced the Germans to retreat, Derlewanger and his gang were sent back to Poland, where they committed the most barbaric of their crimes, executing what is today known as the Wola Massacre during the Warsaw Uprising. On August 1st, 1944, Himmler gave the unit clearance to proceed as they deemed fit, regardless of the savage nature of their acts. They would massacre about 40,000 civilians in the Wola district of Warsaw during the following two weeks. The regiment was given brigade status by October and named SS Special Brigade Derlewanger, and soon after, it was upgraded to Waffen SS Combat Brigade. By then, it had about 4,000 men amongst its ranks. The brigade was then sent to Hungary, where it would help put down the Slovak National Uprising, but the war was already nearing its end. Consequences Even though the majority of Nazi leaders were disgusted by Derlewanger's crimes, the elite believed that such a figure was required to oppress the lower races indiscriminately. However, Derlewanger's actions would soon catch up with him. When the Red Army broke through the East Front, Derlewanger was shot in the chest, and although he survived, he was forced to remain hidden. Then, in April of 1945, Derlewanger was recalled to Germany, but despite his efforts to go unnoticed, he was identified by a former concentration camp inmate. Derlewanger was then imprisoned in the camp in Altshausen, in the French occupation zone, where he was sent to be trialed. However, he did not survive to face the authorities. At the time, the French authorities claimed that he passed away from natural causes, and his official certificate stated that he succumbed to a heart attack. However, his cellmate stated that he had witnessed Polish guards beat him until he passed. He was 49 years old. Despite continued efforts to remove him from power, Derlewanger proved helpful for the most horrific missions the Nazi High Command had in store, and maintained his reign of terror until justice finally caught up to him. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more intriguing content about the World Wars. Stay tuned.